If I could ask everyone to please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Brockton School Committee. Uh, we open each meeting with hearing of visitors. Hearing of visitors is an opportunity for anyone to come before the school committee, the superintendent, and myself uh, to speak on an issue or topic for up to three minutes. So please keep the three-minute time limit in mind. Uh, all matters at hearing of visitors are taken under advisement, but I can assure you that you will have the full attention of all of us up here. Uh, we have a sign-in sheet for folks to sign in prior to the meeting. And we have a couple folks that would like to be heard tonight, so we're going to start with that. Uh, our first guests or guests are Terry McIntosh and Michelle Keene. Come on up and make sure the mics are on and take it away. Good evening. Um, as you know, my name is Terry McIntosh. I'm the vice president of the Brockton CPAC and Michelle Keene, the president of our CPAC. We just wanted to update with you with a, the next couple um, events that we're having, um, our PAC meetings that are, as we're all aware, are here at the Brockton High School from 6.30 to 8 p.m. each meeting um, here at the Brockton High. The next one will be May 20th, and that is um, transition that will be done by um, PowerPoint, and the presentation will be given from the Brockton Public Schools um, Special Ed Department heads. Um, a lot of parents enjoy that um, particular topic, and they requested it again this year, um, and it's a great one to attend. So I strongly recommend um, the parents or the public, anyone welcome to come. It's, it's a great meeting and a lot of great information. So again, that will be May 20th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And um, additional to that meeting on the 20th, we will also um, be adopting of the bylaws and the nomination for the 2019-2020 um, school year um, positions. So anyone's welcome to um, think about that. It's a great pack to be involved in and um, we certainly are looking forward to you know some um, fresh new ideas and support and help so everyone's always welcome to that and we're looking forward to that so that will take place on a May 20th meeting um, so that will be a great one that I think everyone should attend and get a lot of great information on and then um, June 5th we have the Brockton Arc presentation by Kathy Hickory and at that meeting as well, the elections for the CPAC offices will be taking place. Um, so we hope that you can all join us. Um, I feel if we, that we personally have had some great topics this year. I know I met with you, I believe, in January. And I told everyone about that, the meetings that we had and the interest that the parents wanted in the community. And I felt like I personally feel we did a great job this year um, bringing that forward to the parents that whatever was requested or guardians or whoever had wanted the information. It was definitely there this year. Um, so that's kind of my standpoint right now. Um, the importance of the two upcoming meetings, as we said, May 20th, very important. June 5th as well, very important. We always have translators. Um, they're 6.30 to 8 p.m., as I said. Um, we always have refreshments. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet other parents, meet some wonderful speakers, some people that have a lot of knowledge that can help parents, guardians, support, whatever you need. The, the, the meetings certainly can help you with that. So I think it's a great thing to, to come aboard. And if you're interested in becoming on the PAC, being, playing a very important role, we certainly welcome everyone to um, come aboard with ideas and help us um, 
because it's, it's, it's a really great learning tool for myself as well as a parent in Brockton. Um, so I'm going to let Michelle say a few words. Thank you. Um, good evening. In March, we had a fundraiser at the Texas Roadhouse, which was a sensory free night um, for the entire community. And in fact, they would like to partner with CPAC and continue doing this on a quarterly basis. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Well, we actually, we're not supposed to do that, but we'll suspend the rules. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I've, I've been following your Facebook page. I see your online social media posts. Um, you're out there. You're trying to um, bring a lot of people into the meetings. Unfortunately, I, I missed the um, last meeting, but I have it in my calendar. So, and I, th I think it's wonderful that being out there and um, giving the awareness um, really does help. And the Texas Roadhouse, I heard that was a successful night. So, congratulations and thank you for what you're doing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. While we're breaking the rules, Tom, go right ahead. <laughs> it's, only, it's only against the rules if you yeah. get caught. <laughs> um, I'd like to welcome you both. Um, Michelle, I know personally, and I want to basically say that, uh, you know, having great people involved with the CPAC does nothing but uh, help students, uh, fosters, you know, programs and activities that normally wouldn't be able to be done. Michelle, uh, is the president of the um, Hancock Pack as well as the West Pack uh, is always uh, tireless, energetic, um, never uh, hesitates to pick up the phone and call me if there is a need that needs to be met. Um, very active and uh, want to just let you know that we all appreciate what you do. It's parents like this that get involved and uh, make the system a better uh, place for all of our students and make the district stronger. You know, the more we're interacting with one another, the more that uh, the word is out in terms of what activities are happening, uh, it benefits everyone. So I just want to personally thank both of you. Um, I know that uh, the events in the past have been great and I'm looking forward to working uh, with you in the future. I know that um, <clears throat> over at West, we're going to be having a, uh, this is going to be the first spaghetti supper in a long time <clears throat> at West, May 15th, right? So May 15th at 4 o'clock, uh, everyone's welcome to come to West. I made a mandate that it had to be spaghetti uh, because the, these non-Italians don't know that uh, pasta is not spaghetti. They call a pasta a spaghetti supper. No, it's got to be long and stringy to be spaghetti. So I, I had to educate them, but we're good. So it'll be spaghetti on May 15th at 4 o'clock. So and um, please join us because that evening is the spring concert. Yes. Yes, spring concert. So it'll coincide with the spring concert. Come and have something to eat and then go listen to some music. So it's a win-win for everybody. Thank you, both. Anything else? The ladies, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. Judy, Mrs. Sullivan. I just wanted to say that the um, social media awareness, I went to the last meeting of the CPAC, and there was about 30 parents there. So That's great. great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we encourage any parent of a, a Brockton student that uh, receives special education services, it's a great opportunity for support and learning and finding out that there's other families that are feeling all the same challenges that you're feeling and actually have folks you can talk to that understand the shared experience along with the different expert presenters that you bring in with great information for everybody. So thank you for what you do and we'll look to continue to big it, build it to be bigger and better. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very and much. I hope you stick around. I will be talking about the CPAC during my regular portion of presenting in this meeting. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next uh, visitor scheduled to speak is Pat Monteith. Thank you so much for affording. Could you push the button, please? Yep, got to press the button. There you go. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, affording us the opportunity to provide this information to the school department in particular and the school committee. Um, I represent the Boston Public Library, I mean the Brockton Public Library this evening, and a grant that we received back in the fall from UMass Boston to digitize um, the history of Brockton. Um, so this will be part of something that's not only at the Brockton Public Library, but also something that will be a part of 
the UMass Boston Initiative to um, record the entire history of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, <laughs> sorry, these are a little small. Um, so what we're doing on Saturday, May 18th, is we're asking residents and school departments and school people and government offices to bring in photos or whatever other memorabilia they might have um, about the history of Brockton. And it might be um, something that a current resident wants to bring in. It may be something that your grandparents were a part of many years ago. Um, and it should represent the entire uh, history of Brockton. Um, and we have a, a pretty incredible history here in Brockton. Um, so we invite you to come to the library on Saturday, May 18th. Uh, we will be there all day um, to work with UMass Boston, who will have 10 stations set up to be able to scan and take the pictures or you know citations or whatever other memorabilia. And we honestly hope that every single one of the schools um, will dig into their archives and find some photos to bring along as well, too. Um, this is a wonderful opportunity. Um, I'm not sure we'll be able to get them back again because they're trying to digitize the entire um, Commonwealth. Um, yes, that's the two of you on the photo of you two yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. You know, and the whole, the whole thing is, you see a photo like this, and what does this photo represent? So we're not only asking you to bring in your photo, but to tell the story. Um, so we'll, you know, record that both in print form, and we'll also record that um, if you want to go on video as well. Um, photos, you know, can tell a lot of stories, but what do these photos mean to you? Who are the people in these photos? So... Um, Happy to answer any questions, any information you want to have um, about the event. Uh, please let me know. We have handed flyers out to all the committee members. Um, we have the flyers in four different languages. Um, so we encourage you to please um, ask the schools to get involved with this. Ask the parents and the kids. There's no age limit of a three-year-old saw a picture of you know him or herself with their grandparent and wants to bring that in and have that part of this digital history uh, they're welcome to do that too so thank you very much thank you all right very nice okay that'll conclude uh, hearing of visitors we'll be going on to the uh, consent agenda I do want to mention I See a couple of city councilors joining us here tonight. So I want to acknowledge Ward 5 Councilor Ann Beauregard and Ward 7 Councilor Shirley Asak here with us tonight. Any other councilors that I missed? <laughs> that's two more than we usually get. So that's, uh, it's, it's, it's very nice of you two to join us this evening. We appreciate it. All right, we're going to go on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is a block of fairly routine business uh, that the school committee will con consider at once in its entirety as a way to keep the meeting moving along and not get bogged down. So prior to doing so, any member of the school committee has the opportunity to withdraw any item from the consent agenda for individual consideration. So at this point, uh, I will ask the members of the committee if anyone would like to request uh, that a specific item be removed from the consent agenda. Hearing none, I'll take a motion on the Consent agenda. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Approved. Thank you very much. Um, I can't make the motion from here, but I, I would like to make a suggestion. We have a, uh, an agenda item for the end of the night uh, scheduled, and I'd like to see if we would consider making a motion to take it out of order. Uh, and that is the uh, ratification of the BEA contract. Um, as there may be a few folks here that are here for that, rather than tying that up until the very end of the meeting, I thought we might, uh, if the majority of the committee is in agreement, uh, take it out of order at this time. Yep. Motion to take the uh, approval of the BEA contract out of order. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Okay. 
I appreciate that. So, um, right, on, in terms of the BEA ratification, I, do you want me to recognize you or Tom? Uh, Tom, Tom, please. Right, so what I thought I would do is uh, recognize the vice chair of the committee, uh, Tom Minicello, just to uh, give uh, everyone here and watching on television just a little bit of background as to how we get to the point today to be ratifying a contract. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, memorandum of agreement uh, before us this evening was a um, was over a year long negotiation uh, process. I would say that there was probably between 30 and 40 uh, some odd meetings. Uh, we um, had the assistance of uh, a gentleman by the name of Ron Suga, who was basically the um, uh, mediator, organizer in charge, uh, and also um, uh, the second time we went through a process called interest-based bargaining. Uh, this one was a little bit of a hybrid, but uh, basically it's, it's a, uh, a different uh, type of bargaining rather than uh, the traditional adversarial. Um, and it seems to work, it has worked in the past, and it once again, I believe, did work with a few little minor modifications. But we uh, came up with uh, many good ideas that uh, benefit both, both the district as well as certainly our BEA staff members. Uh, a couple of good things I would say for parents in this contract uh, is basically uh, the uh, online parent portal, which is going to provide, uh, you know, information to parents regarding their students' progress to, you know, certainly students regarding their own progress, keeping track of things. Um, uh, and that is something that uh, people, I think, are, are going to find very um, helpful, certainly um, if it was uh, in, in full implementation. Um, uh, sooner would have been better, but um, you know this is definitely a, a, a win for everyone, and I think that uh, um, you know it's something that we're all very proud of. Um, a, a lot of information here also about um, accountability and evaluations, trying to make sense out of the evaluation process, make it uh, organized and and fair for both sides, and also um, you know have it uh, non cumbersome and make make sense you know for for both sides, and that. Uh, I think that w is something that we all work very hard um, to do. Um, I'm present here on the uh, negotiating team from the union side is our good friend Gail Manos, who unfortunately retired, but uh, she's still with us. We're at, hello, Gail. Uh, yeah, um, uh, Kim Gibson uh, couldn't be here this evening, uh, but uh, she works very hard with us, and we uh, do that uh, in, in, in a cooperative method. But uh, you know, she advocates for her people and. Uh, we had a very good bargaining team. Kathy Moran, uh, who is here, certainly uh, our uh, chief uh, human resources officer. Um, uh, Lisa Plant could not be here. She's feeling uh, under the weather, so we wish her well. Um, my good friend Judy Sullivan and certainly the superintendent, Mr. Thomas. Um, we had great representation on our part with uh, Kevin Bresnahan from Mercy Hesse, Toomey, and Lahane. Um, Colin Confoy does a good job always uh, with the BEA. Um, he's their, their counsel and certainly the BEA uh, negotiating team. Uh, too many to name, uh, but uh, uh, Tim Sullivan. Uh, Gail, can you help me rattle off the names of the... Uh, Tim Sullivan, um, Jenny Lundstedt, the script from the Davis, Jenny Lundstedt is uh, administrator at Central, um, Aaron LaBelle, teacher mm. at South. Uh, John. John Cassiani. John and John. John Cassiani and John. John Wilkinson. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it was, you know, a good team of people advocating for both sides. Um, and um, after a lot of hard work and, um, you know, pushing and shoving and, you know, stomping and taking time and, you know, doing our thing, just like everyone else does with their bargaining units, uh, we came up with what we believe is a fair. Um, memorandum of agreement to put before the school committee tonight for ratification. Uh, I do not think we have a need to go into executive session this evening. It's under executive session, but um, I, I do not believe uh, or would support tonight going into executive session. I don't feel there's really a need to do that. Um, we can certainly discuss it and take a vote out here in the regular session. That's so I'd like to recognize the superintendent to be heard also. I think, Tom, you've done an excellent job, and I echo your sentiments. Uh, one thing I want to say is this has been the second round of bargaining in six years that has been interest-based bargaining. I want to thank the uh, Brockton Education Association and Kim Gibson uh, and certainly the members of the school committee and our uh, team 
for going through the trainings, um, for having a lot of face-to-face -face meetings, and if you know anything about interest-based bargaining, it takes a lot of time, a lot of patience, and uh, in the end, you come up with an agreement <clears throat> that hopefully allows the district to stabilize, respects our uh, teaching force, uh, and allows us, as we always have done, uh, to support our students in the Brockton Public Schools. So I want to thank everybody that was involved. Mayor, also thank you to you and to Jay Condon, who were there with us, uh, again, during very difficult times, uh, making sure that we had you know, some funding to be able to settle the contract. So thank you. Did I also mention Mr. Thomas, Deputy Superintendent Thomas? You did. I did. All right. I just want to make sure because he, his, his ego gets bruised easily. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure. I, yeah, he, he was there as well, helping out as He's always. already yeah. looking forward to the next bargaining in a couple of there years. He yeah. was telling yeah. me. He misses it greatly. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion before we uh, ask for a motion? I make a motion then. Uh, if, if, well, is there any further discussion? Mr. Sullivan, you're on the team. Do you want to make any comment? You don't have to. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> All right. So, I'll make, if there's I'll make no further discussion, we'll, we'll entertain a motion. Yep. Uh, I make a motion then for the school committee to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Brockton School Committee and the uh, Brockton Education Association, dated March 11th, 2019. Motion has been made. Properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed. Passes unanimously with six members in attendance. Congratulations. Well, I, I want to personally congratulate everyone involved. I am a firm believer in the collective bargaining process and collective bargaining agreement. When it's done right, it can be a positive. Um, but there's no taking away from the fact that it is really, really hard work. And uh, particularly a, co a contract as complex as this, you know, over years over years worth of negotiations, over 30-something bargaining sessions. So I just want to personally thank everyone that worked on the BEA side, the representatives of the school committee, and the representatives of the administration for, for getting it done, because it's in everyone's best interest to have a collective bargaining agreement that we can all live with. And having been around a few of these now, uh, my experience is that when neither side is really completely happy with it, we probably got a fair deal. So um, if one side's jumping up and down and the other isn't, uh, then that's not how it's supposed to come out. But uh, I think when both sides say that you know, they were able to make some gains and, and make some improvements and end up with something that everyone can believe in for three years, um, I think it's a big accomplishment. And at the end of the day, it's really important to the students and the system to have the stability of having an enforced contract. So thank you to everyone that helped out with that. Thank you. All right. So moving right along, uh, we'll turn the meeting over to the superintendent of schools for her report on teaching and learning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's unusual tonight, but I get to welcome uh, a guest, uh, Mr. Philip uh, Bradley, who is com coming to us from Auckland, New Zealand. And I would like to invite him up. Uh, he is a guest. He is a businessman. He is a businessman and also a school board member um, for a public school for girls, high school girls, about 2,200 students. And I thought it was unusual when I received the communication that he was going to be in the States and happened to be in this area and had searched out Brockton High School probably because of how large our high school is, um, looking at some of the structures in New Zealand and wanted an opportunity to come and visit. I know he was hosted today at the high school. We had an opportunity with some of the school committee members to uh, have some conversations. So we welcome you, Mr. Bradley. Thank you very much, Superintendent Smith, and thank you, Mayor Carpenter. I'm very privileged to be able to be here, and I also acknowledge the work that um, Mrs. Campbell and um, Mrs. Bolton have done in setting that up, and I'm very grateful. I've had the privilege of um, being with Dr. Murray throughout today and had um, the tour and the exposure to Brockton High School and um, the insights to the, the scale and the um, the um, volume of students that you've got there is, is substantial, and um, I'm very thankful. Yes, I am from a, another school board. We do have a different structure, we, um, but like you, we are volunteers as well. 
and uh, we are elected as parent representatives way down at the bottom of the planet in New Zealand. I'm sure many of you would like to come and um, indulge in some of our committee meetings, just as I've had the luxury of coming to see you too. So um, I'm not funding that at this point in time, and I'm sure that the, the funding that you're covering won't go for that, but um, I appreciate that and would welcome you to my country as well. I, <laughs> I was looking at your personal businesses and thinking that you could support that. I noticed behind, um, on the wall there, you have had the whole time a massive rock, and you've got two climbers. I hardly spotted the second one up there, but as I've gone through Brockton today, um, I think that you must be amongst those who have chosen to climb, because many of us wouldn't surmount something as large as that up there. But as I've heard through the challenges of your school, both in the classroom and, and at the financial level and, and in the negotiations that you've just been talking of, Mia, um, you've got plenty of mountains to do. And I commend this school for facing up to those mountains and daring to climb and to aspire to them. So uh, congratulations to you, um, because I think they are genuine and, and well-earned. And I have a suspicion that the people behind me here are also climbing many mountains. And it's wonderful to see so many in attendance and, and participating in this um, democracy that you're exhibiting in truth here. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, uh, also um, I would like to recognize uh, that this is our um, service volunteer month. April is considered that. And we are so fortunate this past year to have been awarded a grant uh, with AmeriCorps. And this started back probably about this time just about a year ago that we were fortunate to be able to bring wonderful people through AmeriCorps volunteers to come into our school and to support literacy throughout our district in a number of our elementary schools. I would like to invite up Karen McCarthy, and also I believe Jane Faroli is here, who really kind of spearheaded the work with this group. We'd like to introduce them to you this evening to award them certificates and to truly thank them from the bottom of our hearts for all the work they did to support our youngsters in the Brockton Public School. So could you tell us a little bit about the program and we will have the volunteers come up. Can you introduce them to us? Um, good evening, Mayor Carpenter, Superintendent Smith, and school committee people. Um, thank you very much for recognizing our AmeriCorps volunteers tonight as it is uh, Volunteer Appreciation Month. Um, we have a great group of volunteers. Um, some of them are even Brockton High School graduates, which we were thrilled to have on our team. Um, one is a parent of Brockton High students. Um, but they are awesome. They are in five of our elementary schools. They're working with um, children at a, and helping them with their literacy, their reading, their communication. Um, they are giving us each 1,700 hours this year as part of this volunteer initiative. Above and beyond the school day, they work in the after school programs, extended day. They work evening programs at different family events at their schools, and as well as parent academy. So we're proud to have them on our team. We have uh, Tamara Pires, who is right here. We have Alicia Williams up back. <laughs> We're going to She's ask fortunate. all of you to come down as soon as we go through the list. <laughs> um, Christina McAvoy, Cheryl Royster, Ann Prince, Nancy Centers, and Rich Latende. Congratulations to all of them. They're awesome for our school system.
We have Nancy Center. Which I'm so excited. Thank you so much for your quality of service. Very much appreciated, sir. And we have Molly Henry. also working with uh, Karen Watts, who was instrumental in making sure that this grant came to the Brockton Public Schools. That's always Karen, thank you. Rebecca, thank you for all your work. Richard Latenta, I'm sure I can tell that was you. May the hours of additional support that they provided to our young children um, again is just such a gift to the kids and when we talk about you know large class sizes or this gave them an opportunity for small group with people that they counted on being there every day and we can't thank this group enough and hope that we can continue to grow this okay and, and next, I would like to invite up uh, Coach John Fidalgo, and we have members of our boys track team that we have heard so much about for the past few months, and we're very excited with their success. I see them out there. I apologize. Coach Fidalgo could not be here, but he sent his much better looking uh, assistant coach uh, to, to talk about the indoor track team. Um, we had several uh, of our teams uh, uh, work real hard all season long. Uh, it's indoor track, but it's somewhat of a misnomer. All the practices are outside on those cold, rainy days. Uh, but we had a lot of kids uh, persevere, a lot of student athletes. And as a result, we were able to field three teams uh, to nationals, uh, which means it's the, cr the cream of the crop. Um, you know, and in that process, uh, we had uh, our 4x4 four four team uh, win all New England, uh, which is the first time, I think, quite a long time that we've had that kind of uh, performance. And probably more important, one of the, the student athletes here today, uh, Joey Estrella, uh, was one of our alternates, and uh, one of our other uh, folks became ill, and he was able to run for us, and we came in fourth in the 4x200 four in all New England. Not just all, you know, Division One Massachusetts, not all state Massachusetts, but all New England. So I'm very, very, very proud of these guys. Um, I also want to recognize uh, you know, the school committee, uh, the uh, Brockton school system as a whole, uh, Mayor Carpenter, thank you very much. The community came together to help us get to uh, New York uh, and do our best. You know, um, it's, it's something uh, for a kid to dream, uh, but it's a whole other thing for a kid to be able to work hard, um, have a community come together, and um, really see what it's like to, to uh, compete at the highest of levels. So I'm very proud of these gentlemen. 
Uh, we have uh, a bunch of them here today, uh, looking dapper, uh, looking better than me. I'm not happy about that. But yes, that's that's it. We got. All right, so we, coach, we'd like to so, come down also. Uh, come on down, guys. Uh, coming down uh, first, if you don't mind, this is uh, Isaiah Laguerre. He's uh, our one of our four by four. We, behind him, we have uh, James Bond or uh, Javier Dunnigan. We have Marvin DeRay. We have the franchise, Jordan Williams. And we have Joey Estrella. Oh, sure. And again, in case you didn't get my name, it's Robert Conley or Coach Bob Conley. It's C-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y. I'm available for, uh, for weddings, <laughs> bar mitzvahs. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah, We do want to mention not only are we proud of you on the track, the fields, but also we're very proud again academically that uh, Javier Donegan, uh, a senior, will be going to UMass Amherst and I believe will be running track there. Congratulations. Marvin Dore, a senior, will be going to Massasoit. We'll be hearing big things from you there. Congratulations. And Jordan Williams, another senior, is going to UMass Lowell. Congratulations. Congratulations. Great. We had the, uh, we had the team into City Hall a couple days before they went down to Nationals in, uh, in New York City. I had a chance to spend a little time with them. And they're all uh, great young men that really represented the city of Brockton well. And we're extremely proud of all their accomplishments. So thank you to the team and to the coaches. Thank you. And Mayor, while we're on uh, congratulations, I also want to uh, invite, do I have both Alexandra units and uh, Mentia Gunpal here? I can't see who's here. Right Alexi there. Oh, you are here. Come on down, please. So I have to tell you, uh, back uh, in the middle of March, uh, I had the opportunity, along with Dr. Ethan Cancel and uh, Assistant Dean Sean Desmond, and I think I shared with you at the school committee meeting that evening, that we had gone to um, a conference that was sponsored by Commissioner Jeff Riley, who will actually be visiting us this Friday here at Brockton High School. And we had an opportunity to take part in what was called Reimagining Education K-12. And it very much had a focus on uh, students, on what we need to be teaching our students to prepare them for college and career and beyond. And we were so fortunate to have Mentia, the president of the class of 2019, and Alexandra, who has been very involved in uh, volunteering. She's a top student at the school. So these students accompanied us that day. And I wanted them to share a little bit about that experience, which was on the campus of UMass Amherst. And I just thought a wonderful day. So thank you so much for being partners with us there. I think we had a lot of fun. Uh, but at the same time, I would like you to kind of share a little bit about your experience. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, it's, it was really nice to sit and listen to a lot of what's happening in the Brockton public school system. And I'd just like to say that I'm so proud to be a student in the Brockton public schools, especially attending the, uh, the conference 
the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, reimagining our Massachusetts education system, I, I realized how lucky we are here in Brockton. A lot of the things that they were reimagining, um, becoming more resilient, more innovative in the classroom, we have a lot of these opportunities here. Uh, I'm a student in the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program, and a lot of that innovative thinking, all of that thinking outside of the box is available at Brockton High School. So all of these opportunities that the State Department is working to reimagine is offered here. And I'm just so thankful for everything that is offered here in the Brockton Public Schools. So thank you. Absolutely. Well, first, let me just say, I apologize for my appearance. I'm busy <laughs> choreographing the musical. Of course you are. <laughs> but I just want to echo everything that Alex has said. What a lovely lady. I just want to say that spending that time at UMass Amherst really opened my eyes to all the different possibilities that um, we have as students here at Brockton High, and just to take classes and to study in such a diverse and unique environment is really beneficial to me as a student and me as a person. And I just think that that conference really taught me that there's no one way to teach and there's no one way that students learn. And I think that taking the time to figure out what works best for people is very important. And I think it's very, it's vital to a school thriving and the entire city thriving, and I just think that that conference was really, really, really just iconic. And so I would urge you all, if you haven't already been, to attend one and, you know, just see what you might learn because we definitely walked in there with some information and we left with a world, world more. So yeah, thank you so much for having us. <laughs> and I would hope that when the uh, commissioner comes on Friday, that uh, Dr. Murray allows you to have an opportunity to say hello and maybe to share some of your comments. I know a lot of work went into that. Um, I think one of the things that we all took away was the focus he had on students. You know, whether Absolutely. it was students performing for us, he walked in with students, he made sure that the center of everything that he's doing is around the success of our students. So I very much appreciate that as a superintendent and was so proud, again, to sit with the two of you two of our top leaders here at Brockton High School, and I'm sure everyone joins me. When we talk about the future and you hear us talk about you know, finances and struggles, uh, you see wonderful things that we share with you tonight about such good people in our district, but this is the future, and it certainly makes me feel very good about what's ahead you know, for so, so many of us, our student athletes, uh, our students involved in government, uh, top students, so we're, we're very excited, and we thank you for taking the time volunteering to do that and representing your classmates so well. No problem, thank you. Thank you. Much. Hey, can we take a picture with you, please? Oh, Alexandra, can I have you remain? Can you please sit there? Yes. So I was just given some wonderful news that you're not aware of, and I'm so glad that I see your mom in the audience. Um, we were told that there is a special award called the Prudential Spirit of Community Award, and it's really based on volunteer hours. So I have a certificate here, and I want to read that based on the number of your volunteer hours for an application that was submitted on your behalf, Alexandra has qualified for the President's Volunteer Service Award. This award recognizes Americans of all ages who have volunteered significant amounts of their time to serve their communities and their country. On behalf of President Donald J. Trump, we are proud to be able to present this prestigious award to Prudential Spirit of Community honorees who have met this requirement. So congratulations, and we would like to give you this award.
This is a wonderful night. And now I'd like to recognize somebody very special to me, and you've heard me talk about this a number of times. It is wonderful to have been in the Brockton Public Schools for 42 years, because what's wonderful about that is so many people that have come along in these years that you are proud to be associated with, uh, proud to have worked alongside them, and very proud when they're given an honor. So I would like to invite our wonderful basketball coach, our varsity basketball coach, Bob Bowen, to come down here while I read uh, a recognition for him. So Bob, can you, can you come and sit here? And I know Kevin Caro is also here tonight, our wonderful athletic director, who was very proud to share this with us. So this was actually sent uh, to uh, Kevin Carroll, our athletic director, and it says, it is our honor and privilege to inform you on behalf of the NFHS Coaches Association that your coach, Robert Bowen, has been selected to receive the 2017-18 Northeast Coach of the Year Award for Boys Basketball. Robert was specifically nominated by your state association, the Massachusetts Interscholastic Athletic Association, the MIAA, as the most deserving recipient for this honor amongst coaches of the sport in Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, and Vermont. We rely on our state associations to help us recognize those who are leading their sport, shaping their athletes, and contributing in a positive way to their community. Please congratulate Robert on being selected as the Northeast Coach of the Year for Boys Basketball. It is our pleasure to recognize leaders and role models at the interscholastic level. So please join me again in congratulating Coach Robert Banks. <laughs> Before I let him come up here, I think uh, many of you know he is also a second grade teacher uh, at the George School. Um, he's been at any number of schools. Bob and I came up years ago as new teachers, very new. And we were uh, considered, uh, back then it was math coaches. And we took some of the most uh, challenged students and made sure that they got additional support. Little did we know how great those jobs were when I look back all those years ago. One thing I have to share with you about Bob, I wish I could claim this. He and I went back and forth on an email and, and you are a legend, Bob, because in 42 years, I want everyone to recognize that this man has only had five sick days in 42 years. I know that's not what this is, award is for, but if that's not an accomplishment, so in my eyes, you truly are a legend, and congratulations on behalf of all of us. I'll just say a couple of quick words here. Uh, first, Superintendent Smith and I do go back a long, long way, and I do have a picture I keep at my desk now. You might want to see Superintendent Smith that we took that first year together to remember those days. Um, I'll just say that it's, I get a lot of help from a lot of people. My principal, Natalie Pohl, is here. Uh, she does a lot to help me get to practice and two games from the elementary school. Uh, we go a little later than the high school, so I rush right out of the George School at 3.15 and get to the high school for 3.30 for practice. 
Uh, of course, Mr. Cairo is a big help there. And of course, great players like Brett Gormley and Michael Thomas are truly the key, <laughs> truly the key to my success. <laughs> so thank you very much for, for the honor here. And um, I love the way Rockton High is getting modern, and I love the way the young people talked about the future. But I have to say, we still run Jack Lehan's play that he taught me in 1969 <laughs> in the Rockton Sophomores. And Brett and Michael, I hope you still know how to run California. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to say, you were just called out in the news, and I'm sure all of you watched last evening our own Orlando Vandross, who was, yes. I believe, an assistant coach for Virginia. Uh, so we're so proud that they have won the national championship. And he calls out, you know, Coach Vic Ortiz, Coach Bob Bowen. You know, who really, when you talk about role models, when I look at what was written, you know, people that years later can look at the skills that they learned here in Brockton, and I'm sure it was the role modeling and mentoring. So, you know, we're certainly proud of his success, and I love that he and Orlando made the was comments. as good a man as you will ever meet, so there's no one we could be prouder of than him. But thank everyone very much. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> I told you I would address uh, the CPAC, and I would like to do that. Um, I came on as superintendent, and having been a former special education teacher, and had worked very closely with our director, uh, Laurie Mason, we came on at the same time. And one of the things we committed to was trying to, as you always do, get parents involved, because parents' involvement is a very important, uh, certainly, topic. It's an important opportunity for parents to connect, especially when you talk about special education students. So we started to encourage, we made connected phone calls, we tried to think of all kinds of ways to uh, keep a CPAC going and provide parents with information. Uh, I wanna thank the parents that are involved, uh, Terry, Michelle, and so many of you that have taken that mantle and are doing the very best that you can. I do wanna bring to the school committee's attention that it was brought to our attention that the bylaws uh, needed to be approved, uh, election of officers. We needed to make sure that we, uh, with the open meeting law, advertise publicly when those meetings are taking place. Making sure that we have minutes of our CPAC meetings and post them on a website for everybody to see. So we uh, thank the um, recommendations. Uh, I reviewed and um, also talked with um, our attorneys just to make sure we're doing everything correctly. As far as the fundraising goes, I can't thank Texas uh, Roadhouse enough. Not only are they supporting uh, CPAC, but uh, many of our uh, parent advisory groups that provide wonderful opportunities for our students. One of the things you heard CPAC advise you on recently was the idea of a playground, I believe, at the Downey School where we have many special needs students. So when we talk about a little fundraiser, that's never going to make certainly $100,000, but it's a start to recognize an opportunity. There is going to be an account set up. We have a wonderful Brockton Education Foundation that is overseen by our finance offices. We have members that serve on there from the school committee and uh, the superintendent's office. So we will continue to do that. So I know all of you have received uh, information on special education advisory councils and guidance, and we will continue to improve, but uh, my goal is to continue to make sure that we try to grow that organization. So once again, uh, thank you. Are there any questions from the committee members uh, on the CPAC? Um, so obviously there's some procedures that need to be followed. Are we going to have like some sort of a, uh, at the start of each perhaps year with the CPAC, give them a, a tutoring session or just go over the, you know, sort of the rules and regs they need to follow because I, I certainly wasn't aware of myself of, I thought it would be run just like an ordinary pack, but obviously there's a little more involved to it. So. Yes, how, how, we will. Yeah, we, yeah, so they need, I think, some tutoring sessions or a yeah. tutoring session. Um, we're, we are working right now with uh, our attorney, Paige Tobin, who we will bring on to make sure, again, I have a memo. I think we feel very competent to go over and make sure, again, we're holding the elections, we're making sure we're following the bylaws, uh, making sure open meeting law that they're posted properly. Um, so, so we will do those type of perfunctory things that, that we need to do. It does function a little bit differently than a regular PAC. So the liaison between the CPAC and um, the district, would, would that be um, uh, Ms. Mason or would yes. that be some? Okay. So, it would be. Okay, great. Perfect. Yeah. And our director is very involved, uh, brings in speakers, makes sure that there are 
uh, topics that are interesting to the parents. And one of the things we tried to adhere to from the beginning was to have them come before you. And they have come before you every year in uh, a recommending kind of forum to advise you of some things just as you saw them do this past January. Perfect. So we will take care of those things that uh, we need to make sure happen according to um, our open meeting laws and follow the uh, mandates of, uh, of our state uh, CPAC. Okay, and certainly if any person on the CPAC needs to consult with any school committee members in terms of, uh, you know, needing any type of assistance, you know, you're certainly free to ask and, you know, don't hesitate so that uh, we can make sure that uh, everything is uh, being run in accordance with um, the D uh, DESE guidelines. So thank you. And again, thank you all for uh, your volunteerism. We appreciate it. Thank you. Any questions? Everyone set? So next, I, I have to tell you, I received an email from one of our teachers, uh, a kindergarten teacher at the R Known School, uh, Kathy Wedge. Um, and she shared with me, and I love when this happens, uh, she shared with me something that her son, and I couldn't remember exactly, but he was a 2003 graduate of Brockton High School. And he has actually gotten an award of honorable mention uh, in 2018 Leatherneck Magazine Writing Contest. And Kathy sent me the article that he had written. Uh, and one of the things it talks about here is it's a great article, those of you that, I'm not sure if I'm dating myself, but everyone knows Steve McQueen. And it was an article that was titled, Before He Became the King of Cool. And it talks about the discipline that the Marines provided for him. So I want to make sure I have this right, that um, Robert uh, is a 2003 graduate. He also is presently in the US Navy Reserve. He is not only a writer, he's an editor for films and TV, and we are very proud of our alumni. And I see his mom and dad, and I see his grandmother out in the audience. So I actually have in my notes, his grandmother is our former nurse, nurse supervisor, Lorraine Kuplast. So it's wonderful to see you. Would you like to come up and talk to us about the work of your son, or? <laughs> uh, no, well, I, all I can say You'd have to come up to the microphone, it's on. It's to the credit of all the, the Brockton Public Schools that Robert has had the success that he has had. And I just want to say thank you for everything that all three of my kids went through the Brockton Public Schools, but Robert has really flown. He's really soaring in the movie industry and in the uh, Naval Reserves. And Kathy, you reminded me that again, he was involved with, I think, all our theater, the all theater, our drama, the did drama a lot of backstage club. things. Mm -hmm. So again, this is somebody, when you look at some of the young people today, you can almost envision, you know, that the world is just open to them with so many opportunities. So thank him for his service to our country. I have shared this article. It is a very fun article to read. Um, if anyone would like this also, we can certainly make it available to you. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you so much. Sorry, Mayor, this is just a busy agenda. Okay. I'd like to uh, next uh, invite up uh, Robert Saltzman, uh, who oversees our Alumni Association and has been trying to steer this uh, course for a couple of years to encourage our alumni to get involved, uh, to care about their uh, high school, the school district that graduated them. Um, I know he wants to, uh, he's put a packet on your table and he's gonna go over just so we have an idea. And hopefully people out there are listening tonight. Uh, if you are an alumni, please get involved. Please connect with us. Thank you. When I started a year or two ago, part-time, the superintendent gave me a three-word job description, get people involved. And that's the essence of the institutional advancement profession, to encourage people to support an organization voluntarily and philanthropically. So my focus was to be the Brockton High School Alumni Association. Uh, this is still a bit of an innovation in public secondary education. And if you let me, I'd like to talk you through some of the steps we're taking to build up a program. When I came on board, I did some research and talked to several people and really got very excited. We've got over 60,000 living graduates in all 50 states. Most colleges in this country cannot claim this. Of that 60,000, about 40,000 are still here in Massachusetts. You know, as I spoke with people, I learned there really is Boxer pride, Brockton pride. But on the other hand, 
there was no database. Uh, the best I could find was an Excel spreadsheet from the year 2010 that had not been touched. There had been no outreach to alumni in at least three years by the high school, by the alumni, by anybody. There was, it was very weak alumni association with contradictory operating rules, and they were just in disarray. But this is basically how I looked at the alumni association. At the apex, there were five or six people. It is a 501c3 corporation, by the way, but, but the leadership were mostly graduates from the 1950s and 60s. The youngest person was from 1985. That was like more than 30 years ago. And the other 60,000 alumni just were not engaged. So I met with the leadership. We talked about creating a strategic plan and how to get them to change their way of thinking. They had to start realizing that there's life beyond Route 24. Uh, that the four or five of them sitting around a cafeteria table were not the alumni association. There already were high school graduates helping out as assistant coaches, mentoring students. That the alumni association should be more of an umbrella for all these activities. We could help coordinate, centralize it, and track it. But don't just focus on themselves, not as an executive committee. If we're going to be a national organization, people should work their way up to a national board. We follow a program which I call CIC. Communications leads to involvement and involvement leads to commitment. And everything we're doing are following, improving those three areas. Because Brockton High is so large, we need to take an approach of encouraging affinity programming and affinity fundraising. They and the school district administration needed to acknowledge that we just can't involve all 60,000 graduates at once. We had to be more strategic about this. You know, basically, about 20% of our graduates had a great time in the high school. They loved their teachers. They were involved in clubs, teams. At the other end of the spectrum, there are, there are students who just had problems academically, family issues, and we'll never get them involved. And then there's this hump in the middle of the students who went to school, got their diplomas, moved on with their lives. And shame on us, we didn't do anything with them. So be strategic. My, my master's thesis was that involved students will become involved alumni. So we wanted to identify who those former student, student leaders were. Once we can come up with some activities in areas of involvement, then our alumni organization brings volunteers in. The chairs of those committees would then become a functioning board of directors, and there would be synergy as the different areas would help each other. So I started holding focus groups and surveys, met a great group of alumni, cross-section, all ages, ethnicity, people who were student leaders, people who just went to school and didn't do anything afterwards, and they came up with over 100 ways to get alumni involved. <laughs> which is overwhelming. So we had to categorize all these areas into five basic areas of involvement. In your packets, uh, there's a fold, there's a volunteer sheet that summarizes all these different areas. So I'm not going to go into them now. But this is how we're going to attract volunteers. The Alumni Association now has a mission statement. They have a purpose. We now have goals and will develop objectives and programs to meet these goals. The most popular suggestion, by the way, which surprises the alumni want career networking for each other as well as for students. We're going to work with today's students and former students, remind them that they're still part of the family, talk about tradition, successful alumni, create programs for both social and professional interaction, change the climate, and start encouraging financial support. And prepare our alumni to be advocates. You know, if you ever need Brockton High graduates all around the Commonwealth for educational advocacy, I've been told not to call it lobbying, they can be a resource for you. you know, back to uh, communications, even with a limited budget, we're communicating more with Brockton High alumni. I'm going to brag a little. I think we had the most interactive page on the public school's website, and we encourage you to, to play with it. Our Facebook presence has quadrupled in the past year. 
with the help of community schools funding, we now have a database management system that can verify if someone's a graduate before we even let him or her join. I have volunteers now who co-administer Instagram, Twitter, Twitter LinkedIn, because that, that's where the alumni are. In your folders, there's a list of ways for you to join the social media platforms, and hopefully you will do that. With community schools funding, we now have an email platform. Uh, we, we've created a monthly newsletter, which we call Boxer Briefs. Um, again, when I was starting out, I found 27,000 email addresses. But after I scrubbed the list, we only had 1,000 good ones. So during the past year, we've acquired 6,000 good email addresses, which is 10% of our alumni body. About 30% of our alumni open our emails. The industry standard is about 20%. So I know there's interest out there. Uh, in fact, more than 2,000 alumni have followed links to give us their contact information. Communications also involves becoming more visible. So I go to a lot of community events to pass out alumni update cards. What's good and what's scary is that about 100 of every 100 cards that come back have totally different information from what we had already. As of noon, I've made 15,946 record changes in the past year. For about 15 years, the Alumni Association begged for five minutes before the high school spring concert so it could present an award to someone in the community in front of an auditorium full of parents who wanted to hear their children perform. So I convinced the Alumni Association to create three awards this year for professional achievement, community service, and to recognize young alumni, and to hold their event on their own. We ended up packing the Stacey Adams Cultural Arts Building and gave an award to someone from out of state who was the CEO of Victoria's Secret. By the way, I learned what Victoria's Secret is. That was the highlight of my night. Uh, this year's honorees will also be from out of state. I can't tell you who they are tonight, though. We've sent out the notices and just haven't heard back from all of them. The Alumni Association has awarded more than $40,000 in student scholarships. And this year, we again will give, out three, give three graduating seniors $1,000 each at this event. We've launched a couple of initiatives. On the first Thursday of every month, alumni gather for social networking in different towns throughout eastern Massachusetts. My research discovered that there hasn't been homecoming games in all the years of Brockton High School. So with the support of Chartwells and Brockton High's administration and the athletics department, we're trying to create an innocent tradition. Also, when I started, I had to scramble to find out when and where class reunions will be. This year, though, seven classes have come to me for help in promoting and planning their get-togethers. We're developing tools to help such groups more and more. And we'll also be able to help other departments and clubs throughout the school system. One of the tools is going to be online giving. We now can accept gifts and send money directly to the Brockton Educational Foundation. We have a, a presence now. We can accept both restricted and unrestricted contributions, as well as event reservations. So I decided to try, it was time to try an experiment. And we, we did a solicitation in December. Through a lot of research, I found everyone who had ever gotten an award from the Alumni Association, every student who had gotten a scholarship, uh, we identified anyone who had ever opened one of our emails. We came up with about 3,500 people. We sent a solicitation to them and got back 50 contributions. Uh, the, I, I talked with the president of JLS Mailing. He was flabbergasted that we more than covered our costs in the first mailing. On the other hand, we also got back 500 bad addresses. And, and these were the alumni we thought we knew where they were. So there's still some building to do. On some of these update cards, God bless them, a couple dozen people said they want to donate to the alumni fund. So last week, we sent them a flyer. There's a copy of it in your folders. And we'll see if they'll actually contribute. All these efforts are leading to the year 2020. That's going to be Brockton High's 150th anniversary, sesquicentennial. That's our new word tonight. 
what we're going to try and build is a year-long celebration. It could be an opportunity for a major fund drive. I want to do an alumni directory. It's a lot of work, but we will publish a commemorative issue and basically update our database. And I, I can promise you that we will have a functioning national organization in place by the end of the next year. So in, in conclusion, I've spent my past year or so building an infrastructure. Now it's time to start having some fun. If you are Brockton High School graduates and you're not hearing from us, there's an update card in your folder. So my commercial is please fill it out so we can start letting you know what we're doing. Thank you. Well, Bob, thank you very much. Uh, I'm just looking around. How many members do we have on the school committee that are alumni? Five? I was trying to figure out Lisa I know is. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Yep. Melinda, you are? She is, yes. <laughs> yeah. So we have a number right here. So again, um, it's a great start, Bob. Thanks for all the work. I, I know it is a continuing effort. Um, I love the idea when you talk about 2020 um, and celebrating the 150th anniversary uh, back uh, about, I guess it was 10 years ago, it was 2010, when we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the opening of Brockton High and at the same time, I was director of community schools and we had a year of fun events that brought people together with a homecoming game to a 70s dance um, to a summer fest for the first time in years. So um, a lot of good things can happen, a lot of goodwill and hopefully it is a celebration that so many wonderful uh, alumni take place next year. Go back to mountain climbing. Any other questions? Any other questions? So thank you um, for working on that. So I, I am class of 91, um, and it's very important to try to bring back a lot of our alumni and, and get them into the database. I'm finding there are a lot of um, Facebook pages for different classes. I know I follow a few of them online. Um, if, if you haven't checked those out, that's a good way um, of getting a lot of you know, BHS al alumni. We have, yeah, we're doing that. I, I started working with class of 1970, getting their ready, and they yeah, see, too bad there isn't like an online form that we can just fill out. And there is. There is? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Our website, uh, Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Mayor, the next is um, an update. Um, I'm going to skip the budget update. I'll go to that, but I'm going to do the curriculum update first. So I'd like to invite uh, Chief Academic Officer June Saber McGuire and uh, Executive Director Dr. Ethan Cancel to update you on the turnaround practices uh, happening in seven of our schools. So, so we have a very quick update, um, a PowerPoint. So as, as the superintendent um, said, we um, are updating you on where we are because we think it's important to give you frequent updates as to the work that's happening across the district, and there's lots of it happening. Um, just this past Saturday alone, we had, I think, four or five of our schools meeting um, going through this planning process, and so part of what we'd like to talk to you about this evening is what the district level of supports look like. We know that there is lots of work happening at the school level, and what we want to explain to you is how the district is really working to make sure that the schools have the support they need from district and department level from central office. So Ethan's going to start off by um, talking about the difference between what he likes to call big T and little t turnaround work. Yeah, it's um, my attempt to put some levity into it. The, uh, the big T turnaround is the stuff that um, <clears throat> used to be the school redesign grant. And so there were multi-year uh, grants coming close to a million dollars over three years. So are no one qualified for in those grants? It was an arduous process writing the grant, I can tell you, but you know, it's worth it. The George School is one of the schools right now that's attempting to win one of those um, large grants. <clears throat> 
the new state turnaround system now has these little t turnarounds, and you can see we have quite a few of these schools. And this is, you write a turnaround plan, you go through this somewhat arduous process that takes up your Saturdays and uh, afternoons, but you can see that we have a bunch of schools, Baker, Brookfield, East, Plouffe, and West. Everyone is working hard, as, as uh, June mentioned, the, the teams meet and they go through this um, process that the state has put out. We will tell you that this is a new process. The state has shifted and instead of having the old process where you had level four schools, that's gone, and now you have these turnaround schools. And in this period of transition, what they're trying to do is they're trying to help schools through a planning process. And we're gonna talk more about that. And so, as I mentioned, one of the things that we have been um, trying to be really thoughtful about is how we at the district level are able to best support the needs of individual schools and thinking about our different offices, our de every department, our special education department, our bilingual department support, and what we've asked each department to do, including the Office of Teaching and Learning, and again, the Special Education Department, you can see the bilingual department support, is what we've done is we've connected people from each one of those central office departments and offices to at least one of the schools. Uh, so uh, for instance, the Arnon, which again has been going through this process for uh, a, a couple of years now, has really had connections to all of us in the Office of Learning and Teaching. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, just yesterday, we met at the Arnon for an update as to where they are with their planning process. We had Susan Berglund from the State Department of Education, um, Ethan Cancel, of course. We had Dr. Heather Ronan, Dr. Julianne Andrade, uh, Karen McCarthy, myself, all of us with the Arnon team going to uh, meet them and to hear from them where they were in their planning process and to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> ways in which we can best support them. Same thing with the Baker, again, a number of years. If you look at the George, again, one of our, our newer schools, thank you, um, to the process, we, we've had to be more strategic and really thinking about the human resources that we have that are going to be able to best support and best sort of match up with the needs of that particular school. Um, I know Karen's been a, a really big help to the George and to Natalie Pohl, the principal there, because she's had prior experience writing the strategic support grant that Natalie is working on, Natalie and her team are working on submitting to the, um, the department. And again, that's a, a competitive grant, just as the Arnone was. If you look over again at the Brookfield, we have uh, Dr. Heather Ronan, uh, Kate Guerin from the special ed office, Jen Hunter from the bilingual department, and again, trying to think about when we look at Jen Hunter and Kate, those are people that work specifically with those student populations in those particular schools. And one of the things that we heard um, just yesterday, because we are meeting on a regular basis with everybody you see, and you'll see on the next slide from the uh, district level support team, is what we're hearing that's a really positive outcome of this is that the district level people are really feeling very connected to the work that's happening in the schools. And that's something that we believe, again, from the district level, that's really important that schools, that the folks out in the schools really understand that the district is here to support them and that we're in the work with them. So um, we have here, we have the middle schools, again, the Office of Teaching and Learning. You'll see there's a representative from, from each of us. We have myself at East Middle School. Dr. Cancel is at the Pluff Academy. We have Sharon Wolder, who has um, begun working directly with West. And then you'll see the, uh, the next layer of the special education department, um, the bilingual department, but in effect what you're seeing is really sort of a holistic approach to the way that the district is working to support the really complex work that the schools are doing. Yeah, and, that, and that's a very important point, the district's role, because you're gonna see in this slide as you go through this, um, what they're calling a turnaround plan timeline, right where that, the arrow starts, it says district systems, 
I've talked about this from an accountability standpoint because this is, this is the sort of schizophrenic nature of the state. On the one hand, there's accountability, and there, that's no joke, it's, it's real, and there are real consequences. On the other hand, there's support. This is the support piece of it, but you can't forget it's coming on the heels of accountability. So in district supports, when, when I talked about accountability last time, the state pays a great deal of attention in these plans to what the district is doing. So, you know, June, who has been one of our most successful turnaround principals, has put these systems, when you look back here, of support. And what the state wants to see is the state wants to see all aspects of the district and for all students. They keep hitting, you know, the all students. What are your lowest performing students, what are these? What are your supports for English language learners? So it's really been a comprehensive, as June points out, team effort, and if the, it's a big part of the plan. You see that these plans, they take you through all these different steps. There's stakeholder engagement, something that is um, sector-wide, education sector-wide. The engagement, the productive engagement of parents is something that just isn't as well developed as it needs to be. The visioning, obviously, you know, if you don't have a, a good vision as to what education looks like, and more particularly, your school. I mean, when, when we go back in time, and I remember we were a lot younger, June, but we came to the school committee asking for funding for your turnaround. We, uh, I'll speak for myself, I was a lot, I was a lot younger then. <laughs> I'm aging in dog years. But, um, you know, you had a very clear vision as to what the school would be. We're not making up our solutions based on our ideology or our feelings. We're doing a, a pretty rigorous root cause analysis. Then we have to pick strategies, and this is a federal requirement that, that they be evidence-based, not just research-based, but evidence. Um, I don't know if I would trust all researchers being one. District systems I already talked about, very important. It's a fundamental part of the plan. And then you have to have these external benchmarks. So it's not enough to say that, you know, we're working real hard, we're now the new and improved whatever school it's, and we have these benchmarks which measure so everyone can see our um, improvement. And then as, you know, the implementation part, that's the part that the Arnon was doing actually because they, they went through these other steps earlier. And so it was great to see um, that team, how they've really been starting to work their plan. And when we look at East, a successful turnaround school, when we look at the old Huntington, which is now the Gilmore, those were schools that actually successfully implemented the plan. So I, I do wanna say, you know, the, the one thing that Brockton can say that no other large urban can say in Massachusetts, we never had a level four school but it was because we took proactive steps to make sure we didn't have a level um, for school. And again, for those of you who were on the school committee, there were some pretty courageous moves and investments that the school committee made at really tough um, budgetary times in those turnaround schools, and you know, they, they have paid off. So, having said all of that, Having said all of that, there are lots of people doing lots of really hard work out there. And again, when I think about just this past Saturday, we had um, the PLUF and we had West Middle School who uh, met, I think it was at West, at West. and I know yep. Ethan and Sharon joined them and helping to support them as they went through this, this um, planning process. I was over at East with, with Kelly Silva and her team. And again, we, we really... Field. The Brookfield, we had the Brookfield team meeting this past Saturday. The George, I think they meet just about every Saturday. So um, the teams, the school teams, and the district level folks that are supporting those teams are, are doing some really hard work, and we really do believe that we're going to see some really positive outcomes as a result of their commitment. So um, right. we just want to keep you up to date on where we are, the plans. The, the George School um, obviously has to submit an actual grant uh, proposal. I think that's due April 30th. Um, the other schools, um, minus the Arnone and the Baker, as Ethan said, are, are on a different tra trajectory. But their plans are due to the state by June 1st. And all those plans do have to actually be approved by uh, the Department of Education. 
There's um, one omission, and sorry, June, I forgot to do yeah. this. Um, Kim Gibson in particular, but yeah. the BEA in general, is one of our partners. We don't do turnaround without the union. That is what the research has shown, and in our own experience, that's what it's shown in Brockton. So you can't do successful turnaround if the union is not on board. And Kim is one of our partners. I'm lucky enough she's on the PLUF team in particular, but she's also um, supporting everyone. So that's, that's a big piece, and I should have put that in the slide. So any questions? As you can see, there's a lot of work going on in the district. Um, again, uh, I think it's very clear that we're committed to doing this work, but it is going to be a long process. We hope we start to see results. Um, I think that's why the advocacy is so important, that we make sure that we advocate to have the budget that we need to support this kind of work. We're not surprised when we have students that are newcomers to our country. And we have to not only get them up to speed on language, but also uh, on learning the content material. Um, we understand, uh, again, we can go on and on about some of the things our children uh, deal with every day. And maybe it's difficult to sometimes focus on learning. So when you talk about the Brockton Public Schools, they've done an excellent job with making sure there's breakfast served to every student, making sure there's opportunities uh, for children to have uh, a dental exam, or making sure that anything that we can do to support families we have done and i believe it does make a difference you know but in the end it is about uh the one thing that keeps coming back to us is making sure that in every one of our classrooms and you hear us talking about that lowest uh 25 percent actually but when you're looking at that you know we have to show a year's progress for every single one of our students with this new accountability system so that means everything has to be rigorous. We have to expect every student, no matter where they are, that they're going to achieve and show progress in that year. So it is all about a vision. It's about a plan. It's about continually looking at the data. And the data just isn't Dr. Cancel. The data isn't just at central office. It's making sure that every teacher in the classroom is equipped to understand how to look at the children in their classroom, and if they're not achieving, what do we need to do to put in those extra supports? So, um, you know, we'll continue to update you and make this a focus uh, so you hear exactly where we are with our partnership with the Department of Education uh, and in every one of our schools. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam Superintendent, I, I just want to say very good presentation. Um, I mean, what we all remember with regard to the Huntington was the cooperation, um, the buy-in and the collaboration with staff. Because if you have all this going on, but staff are not a partner, you're not going to succeed. So um, uh, I'm sure, you know, uh, Ms. Saber certainly knows that because the Huntington was basically, a, you know, a roadmap of um, good, solid collaboration and buy-in. So um, it's good to know that uh, you know, we're doing these positive steps in a um, proactive way and, and you know, always keep in mind, you know, that, you know, the staff needs to be, um, to make it successful like your uh, old school, um, your former school, that, um, you know, they need to be a partner in the whole process. So thank you. Thank you. Any other thank questions? You. Thank you very much. So the other thing I want to bring to your attention while we're, um, I'm sorry, no, it's right here. I knew he was coming. <laughs> I knew you were coming. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do want to bring to your attention that we did have our uh, MCAS uh, English Language Arts uh, exam at Brockton High School. It was the first time online. And I'm sure you saw on the news. And I want you to understand that as far as the composition questions that are given to our students, that is not something that we are allowed to discuss. Teachers are not allowed. You know, they are the proctors during the exam with very specific guidelines as to what they can do to assist students in any way to um, make sure the exams are collected, are accounted for. We go through quite a, a long process for security reasons. But what started to come out a couple, uh, or at least a week ago, was that one of the exams, exam question on our 10th grade uh, composition was in question. 
So uh, we received a notification on the 31st of March telling us that the commissioner was aware that there was a controversial question where students were uncomfortable answering. It may have affected their ability to answer the question. So the question has been pulled from the exam. So again, we will wait for guidelines uh, from our Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I know for them, it's, it's supposed to be a thoughtful process where um, the developer of the test uh, meets with actually committees to discuss the types of questions that you ask such a diverse group of students across the state from many different communities. So I think you saw that on the news. I know they actually did discuss the question. So we're still waiting for guidance other than we know that that is not going to be counted on this particular test. We've been assured that the rest of the test uh, meets the uh, standards that it needs to meet, but I will keep you updated. And before I do the budget update, I will um, take a look at a lot happening with advocacy. And, and Mayor, I know you're going to join me because I know how involved you have been in this. But on the 22nd of March, um, we did attend the uh, hearing, uh, the Joint Committee on Education with uh, Senator Lewis and Representative Peich. Uh, we had three minutes to speak. I was amazed that I could not get in my testimony in that three minutes, no matter how quickly I spoke. Uh, but they started at, are you going to make fun of me, Mr. Minicello? I can see you waiting to say something. <laughs> That's right. I'm not saying a word, it's an election. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we certainly uh, had representation from mayors, uh, from superintendents. I was on the uh, Gateway Committee, which the mayor has also been a very integral part of. Um, we're pleased to be joined by Worcester and New Bedford. Um, you know, I am told it was, again, powerful testimony coming from uh, the Gateway communities. We were very fortunate uh, in listening to our testimony. Both Representative Peich and Senator Lewis spoke about coming here on that Monday, and in fact, they did. And they spent over two hours. We started out uh, visiting Brockton High School. Uh, Dr. Murray, the mayor, and I addressed them and spoke about the challenges that we speak about with our budget all the time. They went through classrooms. They saw the large numbers. They saw the, the building. They saw us trying to have you know, labs that were updated and really met 21st century skills for our kids. We went to the Kennedy School. We saw a kindergarten class with 32 kids in an SEI classroom. Uh, the uh, principal at the Kennedy School talked about you know, needing school adjustment counselors, needing for support staff, needing those very things to make sure that we're supporting education in our district. Uh, we also um, are going to be uh, very much in the next month speaking to the Attorney General's office with our research that has been done on our communities and looking at uh, an equity and in education initiative. So there are a number of events planned, uh, but again, if you look back a year ago, I'm very pleased with the commitment by Brockton. Um, I think we have been right at the forefront of everything that is happening. I believe it is making a difference when you have the senator and the representative come out to visit first, you know, your community. I want to thank our representative uh, Cronin, uh, Cassidy, Dubois, Senator Mike Brady for making sure, uh, you know, again, that they are certainly sharing, you know, what is happening with our budget and really needing the state to pay attention to uh, students uh, in urban districts and gateway cities. So that is my advocacy update. I also want you to know that on the 22nd of April, you've seen us do the um, Tale of Two Cities. You've seen us do it in Worcester. We went to Western Mass. Uh, we were in two places on January 8th. Aldo and I were in Malden. Um, Tom, I believe you were up in New Bedford, Fall River. Um, so we're going to be doing this in uh, Lowell and the surrounding communities in Lowell on the 22nd of April. So that will be um, our next uh, advocacy meeting. Any questions on advocacy? And tonight uh, on the budget, um, we presented to you, so back in January, when the governor's budget finally came out, one of the things we talked about was level services. So if we were to open the doors in September, similar to where we are right now, we would be facing at this point in time a $5.6 million budget deficit. So tonight I was obligated to present to you the superintendent's uh, requested budget. It is not a wish list. It is what I feel we need to run the district effectively. 
It includes uh, teachers, it includes uh, administrators, student support staff, non-certified support staff. It also includes uh, resources uh, for our students, uh, facility upgrades, uh, many, uh, obviously many areas that we're focused on. So we're very hopeful that when the House budget comes out very soon, uh, we will see a number that is hopefully uh, an increase. I hope that the Senate also takes a look at that number. And I'm very hopeful in this budget, we're uh, trying to gear to have absolutely no teacher layoffs and to try to rebuild our uh, district back in a way that makes sense for supporting uh, instruction uh, in our classrooms. So that is my budget update, Mayor. The only other thing, and um, do you want to do the, you want to join me? So the last thing we'll do is something new that we tried were uh, things happening around the district. I will do a very quick PowerPoint for you to see. There, there's so many great things going on that it becomes difficult to talk about all of them. So we decided we would end the superintendent's report, at least for the time that I will be here, which is uh, some very short meetings left, Mr. Mayor. And uh, I'm going to finish with my. I don't my, know exactly how many. I, I, it, well, it's it's already April, and we have I think one meeting this month, so. It's coming down here. Let's do both. Okay, which one are you going to do first? Let's do the uh, recognition. So I'm going to start by showing you the. Uh, people that you actually recognized this evening. I think a picture is worth a thousand words and it's worth it to show them up on the screen to uh, people watching us. So these were our rec uh, recognitions tonight, our AmeriCorps members, and you'll see a picture of all of them here. Very proud of this group. You can tell this was last summer when we were first doing training. They were here during the month of August in preparation uh, for opening up in September. Again, uh, AmeriCorps members, Rebecca, Coach Bob Bowen, and this is my favorite picture coming up uh, of Bob. That's a great coaching. I wish Bob was here to see that. Hopefully, Bob, you're home and your, your family will enjoy seeing you coaching some of your best moments. And this, of course, is uh, Orlando Vandros. We saw this uh, again last night. Uh, so many of you were classmates with him and somebody that is very well respected in the Brockton community. Congratulations. And our boys relay team, and didn't they really show us tonight <laughs> how respectful they were coming here dressed to the nines. A great picture. All the way to New York. Excellent. Okay, and the next one. And this is what's happening around the district. So these are our kudos. And you see, uh, again, the commissioners um, mapping our way forward. And this was reimagining uh, education. This was our UMass Amherst DESE visit. Our uh, assistant dean, Sean Desmond, thank you, Sean, for accompanying our two wonderful students, Alexandra and Mintia. Spring Choral Concert, I can't say enough about not only the usual presentation, but that night to see the, the Brockabellas and the Harmonics who put on a Motown show that was second to none, uh, just excellent. And I wanna congratulate Matt Cunningham who continues to bring our uh, Brockton High School uh, Choral Concert to a whole new level. Worth it. And this was wonderful. So every year as superintendent, I've been very excited, again, and this is our uh, students that are in drama, and it starts out as a competition, and there are well over 100 schools involved in this, and it comes down to 14 schools that are picked to go to the finals. And once again, Brockton High with Magic Theater, which was just a wonderful presentation, put on for all our third graders from across the district, got an opportunity to see this play for children. And when you look at the 15 or so members that are out there during the whole time. It's one thing to put on a play and people have a part. They were involved 
all 35 minutes that they were out there. And I was so excited. I went into Boston on Saturday, the 31st, to see it. And I got um, a text message from Bob Hogan later that night when they were giving out the awards. There isn't a first, second, or third place. There are top honors, and Brockton got top honors. So again, congratulations to all of them. And of course, they're presently getting ready to put on Newsies, which will be, bring, uh, be our spring musical happening Mother's Day weekend. And this was sent to me from Sarah Richards. So this is uh, one of our teachers, Melanie Blood. And she actually uh, is presenting at uh, a National Ed uh, Educators Conference along with one of her college professors. And what this does is making sure our students are getting 21st century skills uh, in teaching of the profession of art. all their work and this was National Autism Day on April 2nd this was sent to us from and you can see that's our staff uh, from the Kennedy School uh, very proud they have their proud t-shirts on and just a great support for our young students um, who just are offer so much in the Brockton Public Schools and we were just notified by Principal uh, Michelle Nazrella that a number of our students have advanced to nationals in the National History Day uh, state competition. Uh, congratulations, you see the students up there. Amanatia, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to say these names right. Sofiat, uh, Stephanie, and Olivia. So they will be, one received first place in a group website, the other was second place in individual exhibit board, and they will be going to, I believe it's Washington, D.C., for the uh, National History Day uh, competition. And again, this was the concert choir uh, with Matt Cunningham, and they were headed to Pittsburgh, I believe, and performed. And our students go all over the country to perform and always come back with honors. It's our concert choir. And we were also just notified, Dr. David Mangus, again, another award, 2019 National Science Teachers Association, the NSTA our uh, biology technology teacher. He was honored with the TIP Science Educators uh, Nationwide Award. Congratulations to Dr. Mangus. And that's it for this evening, and you see the wonderful things happening in our district. Mayor, that is my report for the evening. Okay, thank you, Superintendent. So we still have a couple of uh, remaining pieces of business here to take care of. So we have a couple of uh, items to refer to subcommittee. Are those dates set? Do we have times for those? Or? We are looking to do a facility subcommittee meeting during the month of May. We have been notified by the uh, MSBA that the Huntington School Roof Project is a project that they are looking to, I believe, um, move forward with. On the uh, 23rd, they'll be coming out to do a site visit <clears throat> to actually go and look at the school, look at the condition of the roof, and, and uh, hopefully from that, um, look at you know what work needs to be done and what makes sense to do there. And uh, we're not quite through the approval process, but this is a, a real big step in hopefully bringing us to the finish line of getting an approval on, on that project. Great, good news. So I think you're looking for a May date? Um, yes, yes. We have We've got two school committee meetings in May. I think we have one May 4th, is that correct? Is it May 4th? No, no, May 7th. So May 7th and May 21st would be the dates. The 21st looks like we have a public hearing on this uh, school choice. Yes, we do. We'd still probably do both, or yeah. we could do it. Half hour. Okay. Do one so at six o'clock. Try it on the 31st, May 31st. May 28th. Yep. All right. So we'll plan on those for. May 28th for facilities, is that okay? Okay. 
Um, we did have one other remaining, uh, and Mr. Minicello has stepped out, uh, and that was the approval of uh, subcommittee minutes from our February 26 uh, superintendent's contract subcommittee. I think, are the minutes in the packet? Do you know? Yeah, I think so. I, can close I think they're, they were enclosed separately, I think. Right. So I'll fill in for Mr. Minicello here. I believe the action we're looking to take here is to unencumber those minutes. Uh, those were minutes from a meeting that was held in executive session because at the point in time, the superintendent was meeting with us to discuss her future plans with us. Um, and now that that's public information, there's no reason for us to keep those executive session minutes encumbered any longer. So um, I'll entertain a motion. If you've all had a chance to look at the minutes and are satisfied with them, I'll entertain a motion to unencumber those minutes and make them public. I'd like to make a motion to unencumber the minutes of the February 26th executive session regarding the superintendent's contract. Okay, motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Okay, five members voting all in favor. Thank you. That's more of a piece of housekeeping. And then how about new business? Uh, quick before Tom gets back, we'll see if we can get new business out of the way. <laughs> Anyone? Go ahead. Go second. Mr. D'Agostino. Um, I just wanted to mention, I don't think I mentioned this at the last meeting, but two weeks ago, the Brockton High um, Jazz Band came to Rotary, as they do once a year, and played at uh, the Rotary Club of Brockton's uh, meeting, and they put on an amazing show. It's um, just amazing to see the, the talent that we have, at the, the, and these are high school kids, um, but they, they just, they did a great job. Um, so I wanted to recognize them and thank them for, for joining us. All right. We're on new business, Tom. No, I'm sorry. Uh, we already took care of that. Okay. Yep. Um, Mr. Gormley? I'd just like to acknowledge the Davis School PTA on their very successful fun run this year. Um, I don't know the exact number, but uh, they, were, they met their goal, um, and it was a great event. My wife volunteered, as she has for two years. I think I did last year. But um, it's always a great time, and the kids love it. Uh, this year it was indoors, and... Uh, they light up the gym with all sorts of cool lights and inflatables, and the kids really look forward to it, and it, it raises uh, much-needed funds to help the school. I think this year the goal was to buy a new digital sign for the school. Um, nice. And I also wanted to acknowledge Orlando Vandross, who we've acknowledged a couple of times, but um, I think it would be great if I talked to Mr. Thomas about this. He usually comes back once a summer, and I believe he's the only national champion basketball coach or player from the city uh, in, in our history. So maybe do a little more research and find that out. But he's definitely someone I think we should recognize for his excellence yeah. in his field. Absolutely. Yep. We'll put you on the lead on that, Brett. Be an alumni sorry. award. <laughs> That's right. Be a good alumni award. Ms. Asak. Um, I just wanted to um, uh, thank Cradles to Crayons once again. Um, they reached out to me about a month and a half ago and asked if we would like some donations. I didn't realize what type of donations they were giving us or the amounts. A um, couple of weeks ago, I went into Brighton. So I just want to thank our facilities department, our uh, Deputy Superintendent Michael Thomas, Ken Thompson, and John, one of our um, facilities uh, gentlemen that has always gone in there with me. Um, so we, we crammed 12 pallets of supplies. That's a lot of school supplies, we have thousands and thousands of books that were donated. Um, and this was geared towards the kindergarten. And I, I wish we could give this to every student, but we had to pick certain, certain schools. So kindergarten and a handful of uh, fifth grade classes. So we had, um, we're dispersing them this week. Um, so my facilities uh, department, they're, they're working on that with me and we still need to finish uh, getting them ready for some of the schools. But I wanted to thank because I usually do this on my own with facilities and we get this done and when I saw the pallets I said there's no way I'm going to be able to get this done. So uh, Dr. Murray volunteered to get me some help 
And I just want to thank the members of the Boxer baseball teams. They came out on a Saturday morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, and I thought we were going to just have a few kids. And I want to say there was probably about 18 to 20, 20 um, students there. And they were amazing. Uh, we were just like, like, like a machine. They were all just working. Um, and I really appreciate them coming out on a Saturday morning. So I also want to thank their coaches. We have Coach Brennan and Coach Hines, and then we have um, Mr. Cairo, Kevin Cairo. So without them, I wouldn't have been able to get as much done as we did. Uh, we had other volunteers from, from our community that came out. Um, so we're very lucky to have such a good group of students that, that were out there helping. So, and it was for a great cause. Um, so thank you again, and thank you to Cradles to Crayons. I mean, this was... Jeez, they've been a great each, partner. They, um, each student, um, our kindergarten students, are going to get a pack of books. Uh, there's probably four to five books. Some of them were hardcover for, that were donated from Barnes & Nobles to Cradles to Crayons. And um, then they're going to get supply bags that were already separated for us. And you have... They're just a mix of supplies. And they were, they were pretty impressive, um, some of the items that were in there. And then they gave, um, like, a hygiene bag, like toothbrushes brushes, things like that. So the schools are excited to receive them. Um, once again, I was excited that they thought of us. And we are the only school that I believe they did that for. So uh, we're very lucky that, that they always think of us. So and, and the next thing we have is our backpacks come in the summer. So um, would you like an official thank you from the office? From um, the I'm thinking we should do something extra special because they've sure. been very kind, especially with the with the winter coats. Um, back in December, I mean, 500 winter coats that went to our students, and and then this, I, I'd like to do something a little special for them. Um, maybe if not over the summer, like maybe come September. Uh, they've got they've got quite a few citations from us, quite a few yeah. quite a few certificates. But that'll be nice to um, have them out, um, maybe for the afternoon and just spend the day here and see, see meet some of our students and um, see we're all, all, all you know who they're ben who's benefiting from all these items. But we are very lucky, very lucky. Yeah. So thank you again. Yeah, thank you for spearheading that. And you're right, they have been a fabulous partner. And uh, this is what makes a difference. Did anyone mention the spring concert the other day, last week? The concert, did you mention that? You know what, I, I mentioned the choral concert, but oh. you're right. I Yeah, I last week the, uh, the, the band had a wonderful concert. Uh, Fantastic, as usual. Nice write-up in the paper. Um, Mr. McCreenan told me this evening before uh, this meeting that uh, he had brought a group of students, you know, to New York City, and they really enjoyed uh, a, a fantastic tour of uh, the 9/11 memorial. Uh, I think one of the tour guides was someone who actually um, was uh, there that day and told the kids from her perspective, you know, what was going on, and it was really a, a, a tour. He told me that. Uh, you know, every student was just speechless and, and really got a lot out of, and it wasn't the normal tour, it, you know, so that's wonderful. Um, I would like to thank the mayor. Uh, if anyone has not heard, the mayor is going to be donating uh, to the Brockton Public Schools approximately a 1,000 laptops, uh, half a million dollars. Uh, so that's certainly uh, something that our students will benefit from. Uh, that's a great uh, great asset and a great uh, gift of technology, so that will be uh, uh well received by many students and uh, uh, I think that's it for me tonight. We need Council ASAC to get the appropriation approved by the council though, so <laughs> we'll be sending it up to the council. Work on her. Yeah. We have an in on the school committee. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? New business? I'll just throw in a quick plug for this Saturday, Keep Rockton Beautiful Day. Uh, always a great event each year so uh, we're still looking for more volunteers, but I think we're going to have a record turnout this year. The weather forecast is spectacular for Saturday, so it should be a great, uh, a great day. Registration between 8 and 9 at Heights Crossing. We uh, clean up across the city from 9 to 12, and then there's a uh, free cookout uh, back at Heights Crossing for all the volunteers, and we've got T-shirts and door prizes and things like that, so it's... Uh, if you haven't participated before, we invite you. We can have a team, an individual, but we have a, a lot of groups coming this year. The Boys and Girls Club is bringing a, a good size uh, group of volunteers, among others. So we're, we're looking forward to Saturday. At this Saturday, 8 to 9 registration, 9 to 12 cleanup. Good. Okay. Anyone else? We'll entertain a motion to adjourn.
No one wants to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Motion is made properly. Second. Second. All in favor? Meeting adjourned. Thank you.